Come and do a miracle, a miracle today. Destiny changer, you are a destiny changer. Come and change a destiny, a destiny today. He that will frustrate your destiny has not been born, is not being born, and will never be born. You are going somewhere and you will certainly get there. Can I hear somebody a holla amen three times? Number one, number two, and number three. Welcome to Moment of Destiny. I'm your host, Reverend Dr. Nathan D.D. Fika, President Providence Delta Baptist Conference. We are happy to be with you. We are glad to be with you on this broadcast. And we believe that as you tune in, we believe that as you watch, we believe that as you listen, the word of the Lord will make a meaning in your life and will bring transformation unto you. So I welcome you on board and ask that the Lord bless you as you join us on this broadcast. Your life will never be the same again. In Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray. Amen. Lift your Bible above your head and say with me, this is my Bible. It is a powerful and living word of God. As I read from it today, my life is blessed, my life is revitalized. I will be lifted from where I am to where I ought to be. I will never be the same again. Never, never the same again. Say it loud and never, never the same again. Unless somebody say amen. amen. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 8. We should not commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 of them died. The Lord bless his word into our hearts in Jesus' name. This morning, I want to be looking at God's warnings against immorality. God's warnings against immorality. You may ask, what is immorality? To be immoral is to be impure in behavior. To do that which is sinful. It, is, it has to do with the wrong behavior and character. Behaving exactly according to what is considered by society as not good or acceptable. There are moral standards of every society. When we do things that even society will consider as not good and not acceptable, it is immoral. Living with wrong rules or habits. When our habits have become wrong, habits that are in error. When our habits of conduct are wrong, are sinful it is immoral in scriptural terms it is living below god's principles to be immoral is to live below the principles of god to live below the standards of god it is living in the impulse of the flesh an immoral person is controlled by the flesh he lives by the impulse of the flesh and not the impulse of the spirit so anytime we do something that is not is not orchestrated by the spirit of god it will usually be immoral. Anything that the Spirit of God will not back, anything that the Spirit of God will not support, anything the Spirit of God will say is wrong, and yet we do it, and when we say it, and we go for it, it is immoral. Immorality can be found in every sector of human life and endeavor. Everywhere, in every human life, in every human situation, you can find immoral immorality. In our endeavors, you can find immorality. There is immoral dressing. There is immoral dressing. When the clothes that we wear that ought to cover our bodies, no more cover our bodies, is immoral dressing. When vital parts of our body that are supposed to be covered by the clothes, the clothes that you wear does not cover your body again, then it is immoral dressing. It is indecent in the sight of God and it is indecent in the sight of men. There is immoral education, plagiarism. When you steal, those of you who are in academics, when you steal the property of another person, intellectual property of another person, it is immoral. That is academic immorality. It's intellectual theft. That is to steal academically. When you hold a certificate, 
a degree that you did not earn, you did not go to school to earn, and you parade that certificate, it is immoral. There is immoral talk, there is immoral speech. When what you say promotes wrong behavior, what you say promotes wrong behavior in others and develops bad character in others, it is immoral speech. Our speech must bring people closer to God. But if what we say is driving people away from God and making them to do the wrong things, to act in the wrong way, to bring about the wrong environment by what we have said, it is immoral. There is immoral investment and financing. When your money is spent on promoting what is not good and acceptable in the sight of God, it is immoral. It is immoral to sponsor evil. It is immoral to give money for what is wrong. It is immoral to sponsor kidnappers. It is immoral to sponsor, to sponsor those who destroy. It is immoral to sponsor Boko Haram. It is immoral. It is immoral. And let the world know it. Let the world hear it. Let Nigeria hear it. There is immoral investment, immoral financing. When your money does not go for what heaven will approve of, you are spending in immorality. You are investing in immorality. There is immoral relationship and collaborations. When the relationship drives you to error, like Solomon, who had a relationship of women and the relationships he had with those women was what drove him to immorality and the man that was mentioned as the wisest of all kings the richest of all kings how come the man of wisdom went down it was relationship it was collaboration the relationship that he kept brought about the immorality what about something it was immoral collaboration it was immoral relationship that brought something down what about ananias and sapphira it was immoral they came to the temple of the lord and before peter and told peter this is all that we had we have brought everything that we had and it was not everything and that led to their death in one day and ananias came and said this is all and peter said no this is not it. The spirit of God within me is telling me that you, you are not saying the truth. And then he died on the spot. And the wife came and did made the same mistake. Please save yourself. Not because of wife and husband, friend or whatever. Get your life damaged. Don't get into a relationship that are capable of damaging you. Your future, your present and your future. A collaboration that leads to death. A collaboration that leads to error is immorality there is immoral marriage when you are cohabiting you did not marry properly and you call it marriage you may have had 15 children you may have had 10 children it doesn't matter as long as you did not marry properly you are in an immoral relationship your marriage is immoral when you a believer marries an unbeliever it is immoral homosexuality is immorality lesbianism is immorality girl marriage is immorality unfaithfulness to your partner is immorality divorce is immorality it's not the human rights there's no human rights in what is wrong in the sight of god there's no human right these are manifestations of immorality there is immoral pleasure when the things that excite you and give you pleasure are wrong in the sight of God. You enjoy it. You feel it's pleasurable. It is good. You are watching the film, whatever it is. It's immoral. As long as that pleasure that you have, you are enjoying, does not proceed from the very presence of God and does not have approval from heaven. That is immoral pleasure. There is immoral music. When the sound and tunes and lyrics you enjoy are ungodly, it is immoral. So it's not enough to say, I'm not the singer, but that you listen to it, you enjoy that music, and you know that music does not promote morality. You know it does not promote the, the rights of the kingdom of God. You know it does not promote the standards of the kingdom of God, but you enjoy it, you dance to it. You listen to it. You, you are eager for it. It's immoral. There is immoral possession. There is immoral riches. When you gather your wealth in the, with the wrong means, you gather your wealth, you know you didn't get this money in the right way. You are wealthy, you are rich, but you are not rich through right means. You have immoral riches. You have immoral wealth. You have immoral possession. There is immoral media. Today what we see on the screens of television drive people a wire. There's no morality on the screens anymore. 
the media, the films we watch, the videos we watch, the magazines that we read. I met a young lady of 17. She reads nothing but magazines, immoral magazines, sex magazines. She has no time for her father, no time for anybody. But that she was at loggerhead with everybody. But she was at home with sex magazines. That's why she reads morning till night. It's immoral. They promote wrong behavior. They drive you to error. It is immoral. There is religious immorality. I call it immoral religiosity. Moving from one church to the other. Moving from one prayer house to the other. Moving from one denomination to the other. is religious prostitution. That is religious misconduct. And it is immoral. There are immoral churches, unfortunately. You are not supposed to talk about churches being immoral. What's a church? A church is a gathering of believers. You don't talk about a church except that believers are gathered. But unfortunately today, everything we call church is no more church. That's why I talk about immoral churches. When the church that is supposed to promote godliness now houses or accommodates every ungodly character and conduct, it is an immoral church. When we accommodate, we become, we become a housing place for immoral people. People who have wrong behavior, we accommodate them, we pet them. Such congregations are immoral congregations. And let all the churches all around the world hear this. That the church of God stands to maintain the standards of heaven and not the standards of men. When we shift from the standards of God into the standards of men, I say, please leave them, leave them. It's immorality we are going into. There is immoral judgment. When you call good evil, it is immoral. When you call an evil man a good man, it is immoral. Malachi chapter 2, verse 17, the Lord said, You worry me when you call evil good. And when you call the evil man a good man, you say, You worry me. You give me a burden. You give me a headache. When this thing is wrong and you say it is good, when the man is doing the wrong thing and he says it is good, it is immoral. There are immoral societies. When society that is supposed to be a check on people's behavior now accommodates all manners of characters in the name of mind your business. What you hear is mind your business. It's mind your business. I didn't grow up like that in the society where I grew, I grew up. As a little child, there was check in the community. It's not your father or mother alone. Your uncles, your aunties, your neighbors everywhere, compound to compound, as the entire community, there was check. Society was a check on human beings. But today, it is mind your business. So we have immoral societies. There are immoral jobs, immoral vocations. When what you do for a living is unhealthy and promotes wrong behavior in others, leading them to error, like sales of alcohol. Some of you do that. You sell alcohol. You are looking at me. You sell alcohol, some of you. It is immoral. There is immoral approach to life. There is immoral approach to job. There is immoral approach to, to issues. When not, not doing your job, but you are collecting salary. You don't go to work, but you collect salary at the end of the month. You are immoral. You can sit down at home and at the end of the month earn a salary. You did not work for it. You never went to work. It is immoral. There is professional immorality. When we falsify our age, there are professions, people falsify their age. When you know that the age requirement, you are below the age, you increase the age. Whether you increase or you reduce, it's immoral. Your age is supposed to be your age. Do you even know that it is immoral for you to hide your age? Many of us don't want others to know our age. It's immoral. Why are you hiding your age? What are you hiding it for? And when you, when you knew that you needed a, a higher age, you falsify your document when they were looking for 35. You now said you are 40. You got the job. When retirement is now coming, you now say no. <laughs> you want to go down. You will retire. You will retire. So there is immoral professionalism, professional immorality. Brothers and sisters, 
all of these things in the eyes of God are very, 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 very wrong. Engaging in professions you are not trained for. You are not a medical doctor. You are practicing as a medical doctor. You never trained as a medical doctor. But you are parading yourself as a medical, medical doctor. You open the hospital. You falsify your documents and get into jobs, get into evil government employment. You were never trained a medical doctor. You are an immoral man, immoral woman. And that's why you will see professionals killing human beings because they were not trained for the job. You kill human beings for a profession you never belong to. And sometimes we speak like we are professionals in the field, a profession that is not your own, and you are speaking as an authority in that profession. You are an immoral man. And not an authority there, and you will never be. It's immorality, professional immorality. We fake things. There is immoral behavior, immoral conduct. When you are consistent in a particular conduct or behavior wrongfully, and indeed for the wrong reasons, you are consistent in a particular conduct. You are consistent in a, con a particular behavior. You know it's wrong, but you continue in it. It's immoral behavior. It's immoral conduct. There is immoral engagement. When your partnerships are evil, when your friends are evil, when your companions are evil, when those you run, that rally around you are evil, it is immoral. There is immoral business, making profit in an unjust manner. Some of us feel it doesn't matter. It is my business. It is my profit. There's a limit to a profit that you can have. There's a limit to a profit that is morally okay. When your profit is excessive in business, it is immoral. You buy on credit, but you don't pay. It is immoral to buy from other people on credit, and you don't pay. It's immoral. When you are giving contracts, when you are giving contracts, you don't execute the contract to specification. It is immoral. When you are given a contract, you did not carry out the contract at all. Or you carried out the contract, but not a specification. You collected the money. It is wrong. It is immoral. And that's why you see streets. We left a street. I'm sure somebody was given that contract to get that street in good order. They messed it up for us. Somebody won that contract. I lived in another street in Kolo Kolo before. So somebody won that contract and we were happy that this place had been contracted we would have had good road he just came and threw some kind of distance and that was the end of the contract things became worse when you are supposed to construct a road and you go and uh, you go and pour uh, red red sand I mean, what do they call it this mud eh? you didn't come back to finish up the work what have you you mess up the whole place for the people you are a disaster to society And that's why we see a lot of abandoned projects everywhere. Giving a contract now is a big business. But people don't know that these things are not profitable in the long run. It is immoral to have contracts and not do them or not do them according to specification. You get using the wrong scales and measurements in your business. It is wrong. You are selling Gary. You go and put a... Uh, uh, what did they call them? Uh, carbon, uh, what did they call this? Uh, paper. Eh? You put paper under the, gari, uh, under the basket. You fool and well, well, you fool from top, fool the overflow, but you don't reduce them from bottom. It is immoral. Don't look at me like that. It's immoral. When you take advantage of your customers, it is immoral. When you don't pay your tithe, it is immoral. When you don't redeem your pledges, it is immoral. There is immoral decision. When a decision is against basic principles of right and good, you know from the bottom of your heart, by your, in, in the innermost being of your conscience, this decision is wrong. But for fleshly reasons, for brotherly reasons. I beg like not be that I'm against my brother. You allow the decision to go through. It is immoral. Immoral. When you know this is the value for life, but you bring the value down, the standard down, in taking that decision, it is immoral. 
and biblical standards, you go below them. It is immoral. When your decision is based on human reasoning and fleshly considerations and human sentiments, that decision is immoral. And of course, this is what Paul was addressing, sexual immorality. There is sexual immorality. What is sexual immorality? We have it in two forms. There is fornication. There is adultery. It is fornication when you are unmarried and you are going out with someone else. Having an affair, young girl, having an affair with a man is not your husband. It is fornication. It is adultery when you that is married is leaving your married partner and go into another man or another woman. It is immoral. It is sexual immorality. It is sexual perversion. Masturbation is sexual perversion. Oral sex is, 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 is sexual perversion. Cohabiting is sexual perversion. And that's what we were being pointed to here by Paul. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 8, he says, We indulge, we, we should not commit sexual immorality. It was an instruction. Don't commit sexual immorality. As some of them did, and in one day, 23,000. First Corinthians said 23,000. When you go to the original passage in Numbers chapter 25, it was actually 24,000 I saw in Numbers 25. I don't know why that little error of difference of 1,000. Please turn with me to Numbers 25. I want you to see what Paul was making reference to. I want you to see what Paul was making reference to. Numbers chapter 25. Numbers chapter 25. While Israel was staying in Shittim, the men began to indulge in sexual immorality. What did they begin to indulge in? In sexual immorality. With Moabite women who invited them to the sacrifices to their gods. The people hate and bow down before these gods. So Israel joined in worshipping the bear, the Baal or Peo. And the Lord's anger burned against them. For immorality and idolatry, the Lord's anger burned against them. I'm coming to the issue about idolatry later. The Lord said to Moses, verse 4, Take all the leaders of these people, kill them and expose them in broad daylight before the Lord. So that the Lord's fierce anger may turn away from Israel. So Moses said to Israel's judges, Each of you must put to death those of your men who have joined in worshipping the Baal of Peho. Then an Israelite man brought to his family a Midianite woman. Listen to that. A Midianite woman, not from Israelite woman. If he had sex with a woman that was not his wife, he sinned. In this case, it's not even an Israelite woman. It was a Midianite. The people they were commanded not to marry with. Then an Israelite man brought to his family a Midianite woman right before the eyes of Moses and the whole assembly of Israel while they were weeping at the entrance to the tent of meeting. When Phineas, son of Eliezer, the son of Aaron, the priest, saw this, he left the assembly, took a spear in his hand and followed the Israelite into the tent. He drove the spear through both of them, through the Israelite and into the woman's body. Then the plague against the Israelites was stopped. But those who died in the plague numbered how many? Answer me, how many? 24,000. Notice that this immorality was taking place at the entrance to the tent of meeting. Did you notice that? Immorality was taking place at the entrance to the tent of meeting. The, the tent of meeting was the place of worship in the wilderness. Wherever they stopped, they built a tent where they worshiped the Lord. It is like immorality at the gate of the church. And we have seen immorality even inside church building. Immorality in the altar of the Lord. Immorality in vestries. Immorality in church offices. You saw what Phineas did. Phineas went out for the honor of the Lord. And he took responsibility to sanitize the system. And God was happy with him. Listen to me as we go. Don't only pursue morality for yourself. Pursue morality for the good of everyone. Secondly, 
Pursue morality. Pursue morality for yourself. You need it personally. Pursue morality for the good of everyone. For the good of society. And most importantly, pursue morality for the honor of the Lord. Jesus must be honored in my life. He must be honored in our lives. He must be honored in Nigeria. Jesus must be honored. That's the more important thing. That's why God was happy with Phineas. What Phineas has done please me. He has fought for my honor. I'm happy with him. Therefore, I give him an everlasting priesthood from today. He will now stand before me to represent me for sanitizing the society. And I know you will be an instrument in the hand of the Lord. Because of you, because of me, Nigeria will be a better country. Come on, say amen, somebody. Africa will be a better continent. The church of God, within here and outside, will be a better church for the glory of the Lord. Welcome back. This is still a moment of destiny. I'm sure that God blessed you. And if you have not given your life to Jesus, can I encourage you to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. If you are not saved, you are not safe. If you don't have Christ, you are in crisis. A life without Christ is a life in crisis. I want to encourage you to turn over your life to Jesus, to accept him as your personal Lord and Savior. Have you done that before? Then you need to rededicate your life to him, to consecrate yourself to him. Maybe you backslid and after you gave your life to Christ. Please come back to him. His arms are still open to receive you. And you will have newness of life, a new work with him as you will dedicate your life to him. I don't know what challenge you have, but by this ministration and prayer, your challenges are also taken care of. The miracle working in God will grant you your miracles. Your life will never be the same again. Can I encourage you to join us in any of our Baptist churches, wherever you are, anywhere in the world, and particularly in Delta State, in the Providence Delta Baptist Conference. Get there that you listen to us, you watched us, and the message blessed you. Introduce yourself to the pastor or any official of the church. You will be warmly welcomed and embraced with the hands of the Lord. It is well with you. As I leave you, don't you ever forget this. He that will frustrate your destiny has not been born. It's not been born and will never be born. You are going somewhere and you will certainly get there in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen.